Hello again, everybody. Lance Russell, Dave Brown, right along ringside. And by golly, I'll tell you what, we're just ready for another one, Davey. Oh, you're right. I, we're going to have the Midnight Express in here in the oh, opening yeah. match, talking about, of course, Dennis Condry, Norvell, Austin, and Randy Rose. They'll be involved in that first one. In the next match, we're going to have Dutch Mantel in here. Stan Lane will be in a single match on uh, Championship Wrestling today. We'll have the Cuban and Iranian Assassins with Jimmy Hart going against Rick Morton and David Price in a tag team match. But then, a big expiration of time, six-man tag team match. On one side of the ring, we will have Tommy and Eddie Gilbert and superstar Bill Dundee. On the other side of the ring, the big dream machine, beautiful Bobby Eaton and sweet brown sugar. Son of a gun, I always feel like we're overlooking some of the other matches when you talk particularly about one of them. But I'll tell you what, we'll just stay tuned ourselves right down to that expiration of time because it's going to be a dandy. We're going to get ready to see the Midnight Express coming rolling in here in just a moment right after this. Oh, 15 minute time limit match about to get underway at a total of 425 pounds on the right of the screen from Tupelo, Mississippi, Dennis Upton and from Nashville, Tennessee, Roy Rogers going against him at a total wrestling weight of about 477 pounds, 477 pounds, the Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, Randy Rose and Norvell Austin, one fall 15 minute time limit match, referee Jerry Calhoun. Ring full of folks up there right now as all of the Express is in there. <clears throat> it appears as if Condry and Rose will, well, I don't know. Norvell stripping off his robe, too. That uh, whistle that we've got uh, being sounded out by Norvell Austin. And let's see who's going to start. You never know the last minute in there. They have a little discussion taking a look at the opposition. Interesting thing, Upton and Rogers, two young fellows, but they've got good height. I will say that for a fact. Yeah, it is Rose and Conry. Bell time. We're off and running, Dave. Oh, indeed we are. Dennis Conry, Roy Rogers. I'm sorry, Randy Rose and Roy Rogers. Boy, cold weather's getting to me here in the last few weeks, I think. <laughs> Rose backs away from the ropes. There, where he had Roy Rogers. Rose takes Roy down to the mat. Norvell Austin shouting instructions to Randy Rose. I don't know what he said, but brother, I'll tell you what, he popped him in, rolled it, and took that mare right straight over and down. Beautiful. Roy Rogers comes back with a side headlock on Rose. Back on the ropes, referee Jerry Calhoun there. Once a break, gets a nice clean break as Randy Rose backed away. Roy Rogers had broken the hole. Now he grabs that left arm of Rose. He's got about a twist and a half on it. Whoa. Rose. Good move. He flipped, uh, flipped out of it. Over to the corner, and here is Dennis Condry. Nice takedown. Took him down with that top wrist lock. Makes the tag, and here's Dennis Upton. Dennis. He's got the height. No doubt about that. We've seen Dennis before. Young wrestler out of Tupelo, Mississippi. Going to get today against uh, some mighty rugged competition in his Midnight Express. Man, they can go all three of them. Hopefully it stays just two out of them. <laughs> Andre has up and down on the mat. That whistle you hear, by the way, in case uh, in case we haven't mentioned, that's Norvell Austin over in the corner. And he's going with that whistle for a good part of the match. Yes, he does blow it for a good part of the match. I'll tell you for a fact. Upton back in the corner, but made the tag, and Roy Rogers grabbed Dennis Condry. Condry, with the outstretched arm, made the tag on partner Randy Rose. It's Rose against Roy Rogers. This is the way the match started. We are now two and a half minutes into it. Two and a half minutes gone. Randy Rose. 
that doesn't take some power, Dave, to pick up about 218 and walk around with it and then side suplex it down there. That's exactly what Randy Rose did to Roy Rogers. Dennis Condry in there now after the tag. A bear hug, somewhat of a bear hug on uh, Roy, trying to set up on one anyway. Oh, air pulling. Condry yanked a handful. Roy Rogers gets the tag, and here is Upton. Oh, and as he's coming through the road. Oh, did Condry unload on him? Head into the knee of Randy Rose. Rose up on the middle rope. Drops down across the back of the neck, and Dennis Upton staggered down to one knee. Rose picks him up in the air. Body slam. And Rose double forearms him as he's flying through the air. Upton. Whoa. Nailed him with that upper arm. You could hear it. About six blocks down the street. Condry goes to work on Upton. Upton really being manhandled here by both Condry and Randy Rose before him. Four minutes gone. Four minutes into the action. Upton whipped into the ropes. Close lined by Randy Rose. Rose goes for the tag. Dennis Condry coming back in. Austin blowing the whistle. Up in the air. It's Dennis Upton. Dennis Condry. Power slams him down. Might be it. One, two, and three. The Midnight Express wins another one. Four minutes, 33 seconds the time on it. Dennis Upton, Roy Rogers. Well, they gave it a go. They were underdogs coming into this match, and they do end up losing it. Your official winner is the team of the Midnight Express. Hi, folks. This is obviously Bill Dundee standing for Lance Russell. Now, they called me this morning and said, come on over, you go to make an interview. Well, here I am, and there's no Lance Russell, so I just hope you all had a nice Christmas out there, so it's obvious Lance did because he ain't here today. So Eddie Marlin hands me the sheet of paper. He said, Bill, you can read it, so just read the card to the nice folks in Louisville, then interview yourself. Okay, just bear with me, folks. Here we go. I'll do the best that I can. The first match is Gypsy Joe versus Tojo Yamamoto. The second match is Bobby Eaton versus Rick McCord. The third match is Stan Lane versus Roy Rogers. Then you got Conry Rose with Austin versus Thundercloud and Ricky Morton. They like to be called the Midnight Express, so we'll better call them the Midnight Express. Then you got the Assassins versus Dutch Mantel and Bill Dundee in a no time limit, no disqualification. I'll come back to that in a minute. Then you got the last match is a 15 man battle royal for $2,000. Now, Jimmy Hart, in that battle royal, this is just for you, Daddy. I'm going to save you for last. I'm going to look after you like you're my little brother. Because once everybody else is pinned, I want that battle royal to get down to Bill Dundee and Jimmy Hart. And I'm going to win the battle royal, folks. And Jimmy Hart, you're going to be the last guy in it. Now, I talked to Dutch the other day. And he well, just when it got rocking and rolling the way the Dirty Dutchman likes it, the referee saw fit to stop the match. Because of you, Snake, you're the guy that jumped up in the ring. And you're the guy that caused the disqualification. Well, this week, there's no disqualification. There's no time limit. There's no nothing hot except a bad night for you. Now, let me tell you something, Jimmy Hart. You better prime all your boys up that you got in that battle royal and all you. And you better be primed up real good, Daddy, because this is going to be a bad night for Jimmy Hart and the family. Now, Hart, like I said, the battle royal is going to get down to you and me. And the Dirty Dutchman's already mad because of the referees disqualifying him last week or disqualifying you last week. And Hart, I wouldn't be you for nothing, Daddy. I hope you had a nice Christmas, Jimmy Hart, because it'll be your last one. Even a snake like you, I guess, could have a nice Christmas. You've got to celebrate Christmas like everybody else. Hart, we're going to get you to Louisville Gardens Tuesday night. Bell time beat 8 o'clock. This next match just about to get underway here. One full 15-minute time limit. And introducing at 191 pounds from Black Oak, Arkansas, Kenny Shane. And going against him from Oil Trough, Texas, 224 pounds, Dutch Mantel. This match, one fall, 15-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Okay, bell time, and here we go. As uh, Kenny Shane. Uh, what can you say, Dave? He's a young fella. He's getting a shot. 
uh, not at a title, but he's in there with one of the toughest pound-for-pound -pound guys that you'll find around, and Dutch Mantel, the AWA Southern Heavyweight Champ. Shane making a good effort, went for a leg dive. Dutch squeezed back out of the way on it, moves him aside, and Dutch just kind of controlling the match, looking for the opportunity. Give Kenny Shane a credit. He's going after Mantel. He, uh, he's not backing up and just laying there, Dave. I'll say that for him. Sure, he's uh, a little aggressive here. Now, this, this is a non-title match. Uh, Dutch, though, does hold uh, one of the toughest belts to hold in that AWA Southern Championship. Yeah, Shane tried to do it twice, and uh, Dutch sidestepped him on the second shoulder and popped him right over and down with a hip toss. Mantell into a side headlock. Oh, now there's a shoulder. Shane tried to do the same thing, tried to hook him, but Dutch just rolled back on him, barred that arm. Mantell dropping down hard on Kenny Shane. Goes into a wrist lock on Shane, hanging it low. With a handful of hair, he at least got the Dutchman to the rope. Uh-oh, took a shot at him, mistake. You don't do that to Dutch Mantel because he knows how to answer the same way. You may do it once. Once, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're a minute 50 seconds, almost two minutes into this one. Dutch Mantel, Kenny Shane, championship wrestling. Lance Russell and Dave Brown at ringside. Looking forward to that big six-man expiration of time match. It'll be coming up a little bit later on. Mantell and Chain tie it up. Dutch goes behind. Snatches him off and down. Nice takedown by the Dutchman. Chain trying to keep both shoulders up. Grabs the rope. Dutch pulls him back out to the center of the ring. Drops down with that arm right across the inside of the thigh. Hooks the leg up. The Dutchman just kind of biding his time as Kenny Shane, uh, giving him a hard way to go, takes an upper arm. Had a tendency to slip a hand in and grab a handful of hair on Dutch Mantel. Dutch just kind of playing around with him, I think, right there. Act like he was going to bite his elbow off. Shane had tried to clobber him with that elbow. Once again, Shane hooks the ropes and uh, Dutch backs away as the referee gets an easy break out of these two. And we have just passed the three minute. Uh oh. Shane getting desperate now, trying to make a name. Went for the eyes of Mantell. Dutch trying to avoid him. Slips down below and comes out. Still hadn't cleared up that vision where Shane stuck a... Uh-oh, he nailed him that time. Right at the eye. And Kenny Shane... Resorting to the desperation thing. Going for the eye. Puts an elbow at him as Dutch comes off the catapult of the rope. Drops in the back with a knee. Shane being very aggressive against Dutch Mantel. And Mantel leads back. Pops the feet to him, knocks him down, and Dirty Dutch comes up. He bangs him with a right, kicks him in the head, fires him across the ring. The double Dutch clutch, and that's going to be it. Two, three. Four minutes, 18 seconds the time. 4.18. He messed around with Dutch's eyes. Still got him uh, having a little difficulty clearing up the vision in there. But when Dutch got the opportunity, you saw the way he laid back on those ropes. Both feet, bam, just kicked him right off his feet. Put him down, started to work, and hit him with that double Dutch clutch. And, brother, that was a cover-up. Up. <laughs> One, yes, two, sir. three. You betcha. Dutch Mantel in 418. 418 comes out the victor over Kenny Shane back in a moment. From Memphis, Tennessee at 
190 pounds, Tom Mealy. And going against him from Delray Beach, Florida, 218 pounds with his manager, Jimmy Hart, Stan Lane. This match one fall, 15 minutes time limit, and the referee is Jerry Calhoun. Stan Lane takes his warm-up jacket off. Tom Mealy's ready. He's been uh, standing in the ring. Okay, now time, Dave. Here we go. Ooh, out the way. Boy, it's another one of those situations where Mealy is looking across the ring, and he says, look who I've got to wrestle today. Oh, yeah. Oh, Stan yeah. Lane. So he is the underdog. Lane, a heavy favorite in this one. But surprises do happen. We've seen him before. Ah, Stan Lane. Nice takedown. He gets Mealy down on the mat. Takes the arm up behind him. Stan makes his feet out from under him. Mealy on the mat again. You know, we've said before, Lane, uh, first family or not, he does have some fine wrestling moves, and you've seen a couple of them here against Tom Maley. Lane trying to hook him down, put the shoulders down on the mat. Past the one-minute mark. Jimmy Hart, you can see in the background, wandering around, irritating the crowd. Bailey working Stan Lane's left arm. Stan Lane. Tom Bailey's left arm. He's twisted. Bailey twisted right back. Stan Lane. Trying to figure out a way to break the hold here. And he does it. Flipped him right over his shoulder. Two minutes gone, two minutes down, and a one fall 15 minute time limit match. Stan Lane. Oh. He hooked him with a foot. And down to the mat, Tom Maley. Stan Lane with a stretcher on the left shoulder. Good move, Jimmy. All right. We, we've acknowledged Stan Lane's wrestling ability. The other things concern us from time to time. Bailey, wrapping up that arm. Hey, he whipped him across the ring into the ropes. Meets the top turnbuckle. Suplex by Stan Lane. And a cover, one. Oh, count of one. Tom Mealy breaks out of it. Three minutes, 20 seconds gone. 320 gone in this one. Stan Lane has Tom Mealy on the mat. He's got a headlock on him. Thought uh, Stan had the win there for a moment. But he only, well, he only got a one count. Maley was able to break out of it there. Uh, I, th I, th I think probably Stan could go for a pin just about any time and have a, have a reasonable chance for success there. I don't know, Maley is still wrestling with a bit of confidence. Yeah, he really is. Back away. Boy, it's interesting to see how Tom has built up, man. He's put on a lot of upper body weight and strength up there and uh, looking real good. The young fellow is certainly... Uh-oh. Oh. Brought applause from Jimmy Hart. Mm. That was a forearm that just blasted his teeth. Lane picks him up. Nails him into the top turnbuckle again. 
back on the rope, Lane with a forearm. He's coming back across that top rope and then unloaded on him. He jabbed him there, it looked like. Yeah, referee getting on him about it, too. Bailey, nice reversal. Lane off his feet. Tom Bailey. Now Jimmy Hart wandering around again yelling he was pulling hair. He pulled his hair. Referee trying to get uh, Hart back in the chair. Meanwhile, Tom Bailey dropped across the knee of Stan Lane and Lane just throws him to the mat. Count is one and only a one count. Bailey's hurting though. Tried to reversal, he does reverse and goes after Lane in the corner. Great find that leg and side suplexed him, wow. Bailey back on his feet. Drives Lane back to the ropes with a forearm and another and Lane let him have it. Then the upper arm. Lane with a foot. Six minutes gone. Three. One, two. That is it. Boy, a couple of vicious moves in here by Stan Lane, but that one wrapped it up. Six minutes, 17 seconds. Well, there he is. Uh, he's kind of an impressive-looking figure, you bet. Stan Lane, and uh, he, he, he looked like he got irritated. Tom really was putting it out today in there. Uh, Tom was no Dutch man tell, but he was really giving it going, and Stan Lane said, hey, enough of this, man, and he wheeled that uh, reverse neck breaker on him and really nailed him down hard. He hurt Tom's neck as uh, he then covered him up and got well, one, two, three. We got more action coming up. Don't forget that six-man a little later. Hi folks, this is Bill still standing for Lance. I guess he's either snowed in somewhere or his car won't start. I don't know why he ain't here, but like I said, Eddie handed me the piece of paper and just said, Bill, read the card to the nice folks. So here I am again. Just bear with me one more time. The first match starts at 8 o'clock at the Gypsy Joe versus Tojo Yamamoto. Second match is Bobby Eaton with Hart versus Rick McCord. The third match is Stan Lane versus Roy Rogers, and I imagine the snake will be out second in Stan Lane. Then you got Conry Rose and Austin versus Thundercloud and Ricky Morton. Then you got the Cuban and Iranian Assassin versus Bill Dundee and Dutch Mantel. And a no time limit, no disqualification. And the last match is a 15 man battle royal for $2,000. Let me tell you about the, the $2,000 just for a minute. Everybody in it has to put up $100. And the office puts in $500, and whoever's last in there gets to win the $1,500. Jimmy Hart has about $1,000 invested in that. So, Hart, I'm going to win your $1,000. And like I said, I'm going to keep you in the ring to last, and I'm going to beat you, take your $1,000, and send you home sore, Daddy. Sunday, two priests fight the communist takeover of their church. Take just a moment of our own time right here. I do a lot of uh, interviews and talk to a lot of uh, people, as you know, during championship wrestling. Some of them I enjoy, some of them I don't. This one I take particular pride in because, by golly, I finally got him here. He's a, he's a guy that I've admired uh, talent-wise. I know all of you people around the country, as a matter of fact, have admired him. You know him for walking the dog and the funky chicken and all that. He's just a doggone good wrestling fan, too, and we like to bring up here Rufus Thomas. Come on up here, Rufus. You son of a gun, we've been a long time getting here. It's a, every time I see Rufus, by golly, I say, hey, when are you going to come up and be with us? Oh, I'm going to be up there first chance I get. But well, I'm, I'm here today. <laughs> You're here today. Hey, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for emceeing the show that we did at the Veteran Hospital. Oh, yeah, with Carla and her beautiful saint, oh. Sybil Shepherd. I was, I had never heard you know, live and in person, you and Sybil did a dynamite duet together, and of course, Jerry the King was down there and some great musicians. Yeah, that was a beautiful day. Oh, boy. What a man. I'll tell you what, you gotta, if ever the opportunity comes to see Rufus Thomas uh, in action and performing, this is the guy you gotta see. You're a wonderful guy, and well, I really appreciate you. from me and mine to you and yours, the best of the holiday season to you. 
Rufus, thank you very much. Uh, Here he is, Rufus Thomas. What a gentleman, and I got to tell you, he's a great wrestling fan, and whenever he has a chance and the matches are around, he's at him wherever he is, and we finally got him up here today, and just thanks again, Rufus, for coming up and saying hi to the folks in there. All right, Danny, we got four wrestlers. Right. This is a uh, tag team match here. It'll be one fall, 15. The worst thing I've ever heard about. Oh, sit down, Danny, please. Hmm, one fall, 15-minute time limit match. Total weight of 456 pounds with uh, their manager, Jimmy Hart, the Cuban assassin and the Iranian assassin. Going against them at a total of 403 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, David Price. From Nashville, Tennessee, Rick Morton. This match, one fall, 15-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun will be refereeing. It is very difficult to remain objective and pay attention to just commentating on the action and that when you've got somebody like Jimmy Hart who so well anyhow. Whoa, she Rick Morton starting out. We're ready. You better believe. Bell time. Here we go. Rick Morton, the Cuban assassin out, and Ricky makes a pass at that single leg dive. Cuban assassin backs away, moves around. Now they tie it up, center of the ring. This match has the pairing of uh, Rick Morton and David Price. They haven't wrestled together that much. Of course, the, uh, the Iranian assassin and the Cuban assassin wrestle together all the time. As we go on, we'll see how that might affect the match. Look at those drop kicks in there. Drop kick after drop kick by Rick. That's Ali Hassan, the Iranian assassin, in there on the mat. That's where he's laying. Rick Morton's got his arm. He's got a good bar on it. Ali Hassan, the Iranian assassin with the little pointy shoes that he wears. Yeah, and uh, we'll be on the lookout. He's got that unique and an unusual move, Dave, where he he comes up and kicks at you with both feet at the same time. Really, I've never seen anybody else do not a drop kick, but you watch how he does it if he does it. Aha! He won't that way. Rick Morton uh, uh, loading Jeez. down with that knee to the midsection. Rick Morton, right back in action. Well, the Cuban assassin took the tag, stepped into the ring, and welcomed to the action as Rick Morton moved him around. Rick staying with it. Hadn't made a tag, now he does. To his partner, David Price, who takes over with the uh, Cuban assassin. The assassin almost got away there. This time he grabs the ample hair of David Price, jerks him right now. He starts hair pulling. He's the last guy in the world that should, uh, Dave, with, with the hair that the Cuban assassin has got. Rick Morton in the corner, David Price in action with the Cuban assassin and the Iranian assassin. Right now, Ali Hassan thrown into the rope, but he puts a shoulder on Price. Price timed out as the slingshot from the rope threw Ali Hassan out there. Price waited till the last second, went down and back drop him. Abuse. Now look at Jimmy Hart giving some uh, instructions to the Cuban assassin. Side suplex by the assassin. We're at about three minutes. Three minutes gone. And one to the midsection right there from Ali Hassan as he whams a foot right in the midsection of David Price. Hey, he caught Price with a, that little point of the boot. It, the rules say you can't hit him with the point of the toe. Well, he's not. He's hitting him with the top of the boot. It happens to have a point on it. The referee's coming over to talking to him about it. He may be the hair pulling because he's jerking him around by the hair of his head. Slams him into the foot of uh, the Cuban assassin. Right in the midsection. Yeah. 
Yeah, they are ready, no doubt about it. Big suplex out of Ali Hassan on David Price. There's a one. Rick Morton comes in. Decides to stick his two cents in, which I don't blame him after some of the action that had taken place by a double team from the two assassins. There's a case of it right there where the Iranian assassin holds the arm up. Cuban assassin slams David Price. Front face locks him. Rick Morton, a little encouragement, hollering, hey, get to the corner, get to the corner. Price banging away, trying to get loose, but he's jerked down by the hair by the Cuban assassin. We're four minutes, 30 seconds into the action. Four and a half minutes gone. for the tag. Is what they it's a strange thing. I know that the first family's not used to that, but Rick waiting for a tag from David Price. Double! Oh, boy. They almost fired him over the top rope, and that would have been a disqualification. Price really shaken up by that double backdrop. Over to the corner, and referee Jerry Calhoun trying to back him up. Rick Morton coming over to help out. And once again, David Price rattled against the uh, ring post. Hart getting in a little shot while the referee back was turned on it. David firing back, but he takes a right. There's a tag on the Cuban assassin. David being held in. Six minutes gone. Six minutes passed with uh, nine minutes to go in this one ball 15. And David Price kicking out. Rick Morton uh, coming in to help out right away. They're trying to keep David out of the corner and they're doing a doggone good job of it. They are indeed. The Iranian assassin just kind of headed him off the pass right there. He saw the direction he was headed and got between him and the tag on Rick Morton. David's still swinging, trying to find his way back. Uh, they are busting him with those knees. Ooh. One, and again, only a one count. Now the extraneous voice you hear, Jimmy Hart, having to make a comment or two. And a double elbow, I guess it was. I couldn't see whether it was elbow or clothesline on it. Right. Right. reaching for the tag but he was about four feet away from it I think all they gotta do is let David Price alone and let him get a tag on Rick Morton and they'll find out there he is and right away he's in and at it The Cuban assassin. Shot. Beauty. Coming off the rope. Tag back on David. And he leaned over for a backdrop. Caught him right in the face. Crowd not too enthusiastic about a rich tag. Double clothesline puts him down. There's a cover. Ali Hassan, one, two, three, got him. Well, the assassin team there with uh, Jimmy Hart. Jimmy uh, uh, diverted the attention of one Rick Morton and got him uh, chasing him around on the apron up there. And uh, the assassins wrapped it up, Cuban assassin and the Iranian assassin. So the time on the match, six, uh, or rather eight minutes, seven seconds, and the official winners, the Cuban and Iranian assassin. Okay, we are, in fact, waiting to go with that expiration of time. Action. Well, this is 
that we've been looking forward to because it should be a dandy. The Gilberts, Tommy and Eddie, and Bill Dundee going against the Green Machine, Sweet Brown Sugar, and uh, Beautiful Bobby. Okay, I think that's it. Now let's get the official introductions from Dave. Come on, ready. That's all I got to say. It's a six man. Six man tag team match to the expiration of time. Introducing on one side of the ring, in a total of 718 pounds, the Dream Machine, beautiful Bobby Eaton, sweet brown sugar, their manager Jimmy Hart. On the other side, at 644 pounds, Tommy and Eddie Gilbert, and their partner from Australia, the superstar Bill Dundee. A six man tag team match, and the referee Jerry Calhoun. This one goes to the expiration of time. Okay, we are waiting to see who's going to be starting out. Sugar is out. Beautiful Bobby is out. Looks like the dream start. Bill Dundee will be carrying the banner in the opener right there, waiting for the signal. Ready? Bell time. Here we go. Dundee and the dream machine off and running at it. And mentioning uh, beautiful Bobby was saying, tell him that uh, beautiful Bobby is the one that put Jerry Lawler out and all of that kind of stuff. Just want to say for you folks that uh, who have asked about the king in there, he's getting along fine right now. Had that little stress ulcer and all, but he's doing great, and he'll be back in before too long. Very good. Good to hear that. <laughs> Dream Machine on the mat, and there, superstar Bill Dundee has him right there. Tag made by Dundee on Eddie Gilbert. Backdrop, put the green machine down. Good moves from Eddie Gilbert. Dream machine goes to the corner, makes the tag on beautiful Bobby. Beautiful Bobby out of Huntsville, Alabama. Sweet brown sugar out of Union City, Tennessee. He now claims to wrestle out of New York City. And the green machine says he's from New Orleans. Pulling. Sorry, Bobby. Eddie Gilbert. In here against beautiful Bobby Eaton. There, it, Bobby's telling the referee, hey, he's pulling my hair. Will you keep him from pulling my hair? One of the first family tactics. How about that? Hey, Eddie ducks out of the way. Bobby Eaton. Unloaded on Sweet Brown Trucker who's down here on the floor now. Upper arm by Dundee. Steps on Eaton's fingers. Slapped him in the face. Eaton backs to a corner. Green Machine up there insulting Dundee, and Billy says, all right, why don't you come on in here? Oh, Eaton over-apologizing to Sweet Brown Sugar. Dundee smacked Eaton in the back, and Brown Sugar hits the floor again as he fell off the apron. Bobby Eaton hanging back in the first family quarter. Now he's out of there. The Gilberts, Tommy and Eddie, in a crowd. Going to get the action going. It's going now, but Dundee trapped back in the first family corner. He moves. And Bobby Eaton taking a lesson in how not to win friends and influence people. And Bobby Eaton taking a lesson in how not to win friends. There's a tag made by Bobby Eaton on Sweet Brown Sugar. Bobby Eaton stepping through the ropes. It's Dundee against Sweet Brown Sugar. Dundee, boy, the little Australian is ready today, let me tell you. Right around three minutes into this action.
Dundee steps over. Drop kick. Puts Brown Sugar down to the mat. Right back after him. Rolls him down. Bobby Eaton jumps in there. With no tag, Tommy Gilbert was in to even it up, but Dundee handles it himself. Meanwhile, Eddie Gilbert grabs Brown Sugar from behind, holds him up, and Dundee lets him have it with a right. Eddie Gilbert taking over. I think old man Gilbert just had a heart attack. I don't see him getting in the ring. I see him uh, coming after beautiful Bobby Eaton right here to try to keep him out of the action. What I see, Brown Sugar up in the air. Backdrop by Eddie Gilbert. Brown Sugar makes the tag, and here's the dream machine. Dream machine with a body slam on Eddie. Back to the rope. He drops down with the upper arm. Tag, Bobby Eaton. Whips Eddie Gilbert to the rope. Hit him with a foot in the midsection. Eddie Gilbert slammed into the rope. Crossed away into the Dream Machine's knee. Sweet Brown Sugar in. They double team, the first family does. Two of them in there, battering Eddie. Dundee jumps in, goes after Bobby Eaton. Referee trying to get them separated. Eddie Gilbert, Sweet Brown Sugar, meanwhile, slugging it out more of a boxing match than a wrestling match. They're really going at each other. Oh, Bobby Eaton grabs Eddie from behind. And with both fists, Sweet Brown Sugar caught him on the chin. Boy, Eaton just keeps wandering in there. And Tommy Gilbert's seen about enough of that. He's grabbing Eaton. Dream Machine has Eddie Gilbert. Dundee working on Sweet Brown Sugar. Action all over the place. Brown Sugar is just unloaded on Dundee with a right fist. Dream Machine and Eddie Gilbert, they're the ones that end up staying in the ring. I guess they're the official people in here. I don't know with all the uh, confusion. Eddie certainly uh, was the one who was supposed to be in there. If it's okay with a referee, it's okay with us. That's right. Oh. Eddie trying to get to the corner, almost there, but Brown Sugar jumps right in front of it. We're about six minutes into this. I was wondering, because Bobby Eaton had no business being in there, Sugar had no business being in there, and now the Dream Machine back in. <laughs> About six and a half gone. Whoa, there's that drop kick from Brown Sugar. About six and a half gone. There's that drop kick from Brown Sugar. Tag on Billy Dundee and a pairing. Ah, oh, Bill pushes Brown Sugar back, takes a swing at beautiful Bobby. Dream Machine in, Tommy Gilbert in, Eddie from the outside doing his work with beautiful Bobby. And we got everybody going. Back drop, Dundee down after. Jimmy Hart around the ring. Look out. Beautiful Bobby out, look out. Our time is running down here. Sugar and Bobby Eaton went in there, and Brown Sugar came out on his head, down on the floor. Hey, Bobby Eaton. Brown Sugar came out on his head, down on the floor. Eaton. 
over that apron. Yeah, boy, he sure did. We're about eight minutes into this, a little over eight minutes gone. Look at that Eddie Gilbert goal. Oh, what a sweetheart. Beautiful Bobby hammered into the corner, fired into the rope. Dundee going for a sleeper. Missed it, trying to adjust. Brown Sugar in, pounding on him. Never had a chance. Dream Machine and Tommy Gilbert. Uh, Super Destroyer just hit the ring. And that's going to be a disqualification. Super Destroyer taking a beeline for the superstar, Bill Dundee. Jumped up in there while he was involved in the action. Hammered and banged away on him. And a disqualification is going to come out of that first ball, Dave. As the first family, a whole bunch of them, there's five of them up in the ring right now. Yeah, the time on it is going to be uh, right about 8 minutes 40 seconds in that neighborhood as uh, the DQ occurred. Yeah, yeah, all five of you, I might point uh -huh. that out. Jimmy Hart saying we ran the coward off. And Boy, it is certainly difficult to do commentary with 75 people trying to talk. Okay, let's see if we can get an official on that particular fall, Davey. All right, uh, that one is uh, about five, about uh, eight minutes, 40 seconds, right about 8.40. Eight minutes, 40 seconds, disqualification. The winners officially will be Tommy and Eddie Gilbert and Bill Dundee. And we're going to have to check our time to see how much time we have left on expiration of it. Be back in a moment. <laughs> One fall is sufficient, the way that thing ended up right in there. Just about be it. In fact, Super Destroyer taking it upon himself to hop in there and make another member of the first family. Yeah. Of course, he was gunning it at uh, Bill Dundee right there. But, it, uh, well, let's have a recap, Davey. Okay, yeah. before we get to that one, the uh, expiration of time match, the opening match today, Midnight Express in here, and uh, they defeated Dennis Upton and Roy Rogers in about four and a half minutes. It was a Dutchman, Dutch Mantel, going against Kenny Shane. Kenny Shane, a young wrestler who uh, was taking a shot today at uh, Dutch Mantel, and he gave it all he had. He even resorted to whatever tactics he could uh, think of, but Dutchman won it in 418. It was Stan Lane over Tom Maley in a little over six minutes. The Cuban and the Iranian Assassins with Jimmy Hart winning the match over Rick Morton and David Price. The Assassins got the victory. Then we came into the six-man tag team match. It seems like... Six-man tag team matches are always hard to keep up with. Uh, pity the poor referee in there who gets uh, gets a lot of abuse, but my goodness, he had six of them, and Tommy and Eddie Gilbert and Bill Dundee on one side of the ring. On the other side, it was the Dream Machine, beautiful Bobby Eaton, Sweet Brown Sugar, Manager Jimmy Hart, and the Super Destroyer, who came roaring in here at the end of it after about uh, eight minutes and 40 seconds worth. He jumped into the ring, headed for Dundee, so the referee immediately disqualified the first family at that point. So the winners of the fall and the match are going to be Tommy and Eddie Gilbert and Bill Superstar Dundee. But uh, many times during the match, all six of them were in there. And then uh, when uh, Super Destroyer hit the ring, he was there, Hart climbed in. So we ended up yeah, having uh, eight yeah. in the ring and the referee, nine altogether. Okay. Mm. Big championship wrestling. I uh, want to say that most places, uh, you folks will be, uh, this will be the day after Christmas uh, as you're looking at it. We hope you had a good one and everybody's healthy. Some places the day after New Year's Day and the same wish goes too. We'll be looking at you again next week for Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.